In August 2017, Kenya joined over 20 other countries in banning the production and use of plastic bags as a way of reducing the impact of plastics to the environment. But close to a year later, it appears the ban may not be as effective as it was meant to be. Our investigations reveal that the outlawed polythene bag is making its way back to the market. Dubious manufacturers and smugglers have established a thriving black market for plastic bags. And for those involved, business is booming. We want to find out why plastic bags are still so easily accessible and understand where enforcers of the ban may have dropped the ball. That story takes us across the border into Uganda. We are in Kampala, Uganda. On this Wednesday morning, Nakawa Market is bustling with activities. But what grabs our attention is the ever-present plastic bags, popularly known here as Kavera. It's primarily used for packaging as well as a carrier bag. <laughs> Siko Zuzu has been a fruit vendor here for over 15 years. He understands better than anyone else how these bags come in handy. As vendors in the market, that's what we have by now to help us operate uh, our business. In Nakawa, like many other marketplaces in Uganda, you either come with your own Kavera or get it from the traders at an extra cost. But using them has proven a somewhat costly affair to traders like Zuzu. The manufacturers increased the price. We used to buy, uh, to buy one bundle of a white plastic bag at 1,000, but now it is at 5,000. And that's because manufacturers are riding on a ban on plastic bags to inflate prices of caveras. Here in Uganda, the ban on plastic bags was first introduced in 2009 through the Finance Act. It flopped. In 2015, the ban was reintroduced and the Ugandan government committed to enforce it. Not much progress was recorded. Three years later, the Cavera is still a preferred packaging and carrier bag. By default, the usage of Caveras, even though illegal, is still allowed and carrying it is almost second to nature for Ugandans. So here in Uganda, and for instance, the Nakawa market, the ban on plastic bags is well known and in fact highly appreciated. But then again, traders and customers alike cannot help the continuous use of these particular bags and they do have their justification. And the government, before putting a ban on it, they should first think of introducing the alternatives what the vendors, the, 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 the business people will be using in a replacement. If the caveras are taken away before giving us the alternative, we shall be stranded the way of serving our customers because they always come asking. When you give them, they say, if you have no bag to give us, then I'm not buying your things. So you remain there stranded. There was a pressure that was mounted greatly by the plastic manufacturers. Uh, claiming that was unfair, they had lost revenue and whatever. Then we had elections coming, 2016. So we had to change our strategy a bit to, 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 to not to follow that enforcement. And so here in Uganda, the trade around a plastic bag is a booming one. In fact, uh, if you want to get some, it's as simple as walking into a supplier shop placing your order and walking out with your supply moments later. But we are interested in proving the claims we have already had that some of these polythene bags end up in Kenya illegally. And so we embark on a mission to buy two bills and try smuggle them into Kenya through the illegal routes at the border. We identify two different outlets in downtown Kampala. Using hidden cameras, we film the transactions. Both buys, though discreet, prove successful. We then stash one bell of the Caveras in our car, ready to drive into Kenya. We hand over the second piece to a public service bus. Aware of the risks involved, the operators agree to ferry the contraband to Nairobi, but at a fee.
For us, this is a long journey that should prove risky. But the contrary manifests. We encounter no hurdles, no police checks on the way, no roadblocks, no interference of any sorts. But as we approach the border post in Busia, panic creeps in. We first have to clear with the Ugandan authorities, yeah. then deal with the Kenyan authorities. Yeah, because that, that is where our headache is. Yeah, but let's see whether we'll hack it, right? Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> At the border post, it is standard procedure to get cleared by immigration offices, irrespective of the side you are coming from. Vehicles that pass through the customs department must be searched. With our contraband still intact, we follow the procedures. Photography is prohibited here, but we manage to capture this clip as we easily pass through the barriers. Our vehicle isn't thoroughly searched. It's pitch dark by the time we cross over to the Kenyan side. Let's see. Kama tutafika Nairobi nazo. Ali tricky pia, machex iko kibao kwa barabara. Tuone itakuwaaje, ndio? Yep. Hiyo design. Twende. We are told night time is when illicit traders are most active. Yes, indeed, our borders are porous, but policing is only one strategy and the most least effective strategy because cutting off markets and creating awareness is a more successful strategy. The following morning, we drive into Busia town. Here, we are told of several illegal routes that are preferred by smugglers. One of them is this one. Traders and citizens freely cross over from Kenya to Uganda and vice versa. Only one or two policemen man the area, but their presence does nothing much to prohibit traders from smuggling goods. In under a minute, our presence here raises eyebrows. Four young men approaches and demand we identify ourselves. The consequences would be dire, they warn us. Without blowing our cover, we drive off. We are then guided to yet another illegal entry point in a place called Sofia. Here, people talk charcoal, sell charcoal and sleep charcoal. Lots of contraband goods also make their way into Kenya through this point. This despite police presence in the area. Our presence again gets noticed and we are advised to leave. Back in Busia town, business owners lament the influx of plastic bags. When they are all over, they are all over the country. So they have affected the movement of the khaki bags adversely. Mm -hmm. So at the moment we are not able to sell at all. Mm. Like I could say, the patch which we have over there, we purchased it uh, some four months ago, mm -hmm. so they have not been quite moving. Mm -hmm. The situation is now threatening livelihoods as the salesperson for one of the local companies making alternative khaki bags says. Sasa hindi kitega uchumi changu, na kama sirikala yezo pigana na hii makatasi ya kutoka ngambo, basi na sisi pia takosa kazi, kwa sababu pia tutakuwa na kazi, kwa sababu majiru wangu, it is a situation that has seen production capacity for makers of alternative carrier bags dwindle from 4,500 tons a month to just 1,000 tons according to industry data. This despite companies having pumped in over 1.5 billion shillings worth of alternative equipment for biodegradables. It is a trend that Environment Watchdog Nema says it knows and is working towards taming. By and large, Kenyans themselves who are not in, in, in engaged in any business, we have seen that they are not using these plastics. It's the ones who are actually trying to do business that are trying to, to enforce those on Kenyans. Mm -hmm. uh, we request, we notice that Kenyans seem to be troubled. They still haven't uh, captured the culture of carrying their bag and therefore they are finding it very expensive to go and buy a bag every time that you are going to buy something. 
Neymar has pegged the band's success rate in the country at 80%. Their goal is to declare Kenya a plastic-free country two years into the ban. So far, 166 manufacturers have been arrested for illegal practices. 132 distributors have also been brought to book. 850 vendors have equally been apprehended for flouting the plastic ban law. 10 of the manufacturers have been taken to court. Amid the grim statistics, the two neighboring countries are caught up in a blame game of just where the plastic bag's problem really lies. Tanzania and Uganda are struggling a bit, Ethiopia not at all. So we have influx of this through the borders. Is Kenya thinking that the plastic bags are re-entering Kenya from Uganda? Yes. That's shame, because it was the other way around. <laughs> we, we, we have not had any complaint like that. But Ugandan officials admit that they have a real internal challenge on how to stem the problem of these highly polluting polythene bags. We have 60 industries which are officially licensed to do business in Uganda and produce this. So we don't just wake up and say the ban is on and pack your things and go home because you have to look at the jobs, people who are getting jobs there. And slowly we are phasing out and we shall be there without causing any harm or resulting into any litigation or so on. The Ugandan government is now looking for a legal solution to this runaway problem. We are reviewing the Environment Act and in the Act we've embedded the ban the stringent or the areas where we are going to ban. Now there are other materials which will be allowed and we are also going ahead to put plans in place to see how we work with those who will be using those materials to see that they don't harm the environment and they also don't harm the Ugandans. But the Kampala City Traders Association wants the ban lifted altogether forever. Total plastic ban is about perception and the attitude of the people in a certain country. If people are weak, if people are negligent, they will always advocate for a ban. To the contrary, if people are serious, hardworking, and ready to protect the environment wholeheartedly, they will advocate for recycling, reusage, and a proper refusal, disposal. But as the debate rages on in Uganda, the plastic business across the border continues to blossom. From Busia town, we begin our journey back to Nairobi. Our bell still hidden, we manage to deliver it safe and sound. A few days later, the second consignment arrives in Nairobi through a public service vehicle undetected. The contraband is delivered to us. And so, the question begs, if we could manage to smuggle in two bales of illegal plastic bags into the country, how much more do the cartels sneak in? The trade, we are told, is a well-choreographed game that involves compromised officers and agents, some of whom are senior government officials. Can you smuggled it. Yes, These are your did. goodies. Okay. okay. Can I call my officers? You guys Since you have yeah. brought them in. <laughs> we decide to take the smuggle consignment to Nema. And, and uh, move with them in our vehicle. And we brought them over. Okay. Where did you buy them? In uh, Uganda. Here. Mm -hmm. Made in Uganda. This is in Uganda. Yeah. Okay. But they're here in so China. this, yeah, these yes. are whole bale yes. we bought in Uganda, two of them, okay, and so this is just one of them. Ah, uh, I can see okay. why you are talking of forest border. Yes. You see? Okay. This is a lesson learned about uh, vigilance, particularly the borders. What time did you come? Um, Day or night? Day. In the evening. The evening. Yeah. In the evening. Yeah. Okay. We've learned something. I may not share with you on camera. Oh, okay. But uh, I'll take that challenge mm -hmm. and yeah. perhaps uh, uh, dare you to try again. <laughs> we try again? Yeah. We try again. <laughs> if we succeed? No, 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 no. I think that if we succeed? <laughs> if we succeed? Let's not go there. But <laughs> yeah, most likely, yeah. let's say that this is a lesson learned okay. and that uh, you may not be the only one. 
That's what we know. While the blame game may be laid on the porous borders, stakeholders say enforcement agencies too may be sleeping on the job. A section of them are of the opinion that there exists protected manufacturers who are still churning out plastic bags in unbelievable volumes. Many of them who are unwilling to speak on camera for fear of reprisals term the ban as ineffective and decry the billions of shillings that have been invested in new machinery for alternative to plastics. But what hurts them the most are the thousands of jobs lost as a result of bad business in the face of a market flooded by illegal polythene bags. Does it bother you that their businesses are hurting? A lot. Uh... It does a lot. Uh, however, there's something called fair business practices. If, if you look at the implementation of this, um, we, we are under a lot of pressure. At first it was business, loss of business, loss of jobs, but there are alternatives. Conversion, if these guys had listened to us, conversion of production equipment, to produce alternatives would have been something we would have negotiated if we saw goodwill. And therefore, they didn't have to lose jobs. But to wait until the last minute, that also build our resolve. Because if you are talking to an obstinate person who doesn't seem to pay attention and is willing even on the last minute they are going to court and all that, even after talking for 15 years, then sometimes you have complacence in also their obstinacy. For now, it appears the ban on plastics in Kenya is only good on paper, with many honest traders caught in between struggling to produce alternatives to plastics while witnessing every day a thriving business that is officially outlawed. Patrick Igunza, Plastics Without Borders.